Hey guys, welcome everybody. This is the 28th Ask Your Questions session. My name is Bharat Chaudhary and in this session we are going to talk about exactly what's stated in this theme which is going to be the complete procedure for bachelors in Germany. And I know it's like um I I understand it has taken a long time for me to actually come up with this one because the masters um yeah the application procedure was on and then that's why I had to like put out that content first and now afterwards the bachelor one is here but here's the thing and uh, like remember this point very clearly once you have gone through this video till the end of the live session this is going to be the most complete and practical video that you're going to find about studying your bachelor's in germany so even if you have gone through this entire video afterwards and you still cannot make up your mind then well it's it's a bit difficult to take this complete journey of coming to germany seriously all right then um well welcome everybody like i said already um i'm seeing some some chat some some comments here soham hi soham uh people from kerala all right super nice so if like because we start our live session all the time like this just let me know from which city is you're coming from and then slowly and slowly we'll start with the session and also i think one very important thing for somebody who might not know it yet we are coming to india and we are having our meetups that means you have the opportunity now to actually vote uh vote your city in the poll that we have on the facebook group the link i'm going to put in the description but just to give it give you guys a bit of an overview how it is going to be or like what kind of results are already out so delhi is again the most popular one with 59 then comes then comes chennai uh yeah Wait, Chasing Future, can you explain about UG MBBS? Sorry, Chasing Future, not much idea about that right now. So I wanted to just show you that thing. Just a second. The polls are coming up and Delhi has, I think, the most, the most things Delhi has. So like, it, that's super nice. We don't have to go too far. But then afterwards, we have Kolkata at the second place. So really, really curious about it. Okay. Nick Chavra, is German bachelor's degree worth anything in India? Well, it essentially isn't. Um, other than the, like the only thing that's worth in India is the wor work experience afterwards. If you think you can get some really crazy jobs in India after you have done your bachelor's, I don't think that's true. Like bachelor's Germans are more tailored towards German industry and not the Indian one. So like that would be really foolish to think that the German bachelor's degree is going to be worth a lot or is going to be actually taken equivalent to some degree from NIT or something. No? All right, then. Just a second. Yeah. So um, this poll is going to be available in the Facebook group from now on. And you can just directly go and you can pick a city and you can vote there. That is going to be really nice so that we can actually start preparing which city we should go to. We are going to most probably take the first five cities and that's pretty much it because we don't have too many holidays. And then the, my university will start again and Alina's, Alina's work will start again. So just like make sure that you actually vote and then, you know, we can just have the meetups properly. All right, then with all of those things out of the way, let's slowly and slowly start with our today's agenda, which is the complete procedure for bachelors in Germany. Now let's go to the screen, to the presentation screen. So um, again, we were going to start in two minutes, already dead. There's another announcement and this is specially only for the people who are already in Germany. So like maybe if you are studying in a student colleague or if you are just um, 
I don't know, doing some language preparation course here in Germany. This is going to be something very interesting for you, which is the big mentorship program, which has been launched um, on the 1st January. So you can just come, you can take a look. This is actually focused towards just the aspirants. So like if you're coming for bachelor's or master's, both can benefit from it. If you're looking, if you're just a bachelor or a master's student studying in Germany, so it, it doesn't matter from which country you're from, you could be from Middle East, you could be from Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, doesn't matter which country you're from. Um, that could be something for you and the professionals in any country. And what exactly does it talk about? So like in this mentorship program, we are like exploring more topics regarding productivity, how to make the best out of the Germany, like not out of the Germany, make the best out of Germany, because that's essentially what why you are coming here you know you are coming here to study to build your career to do more things afterwards and if during those three years or during those two years of masters or bachelors you aren't really making the making full out of whatever you're studying it is going to actually hurt you afterwards because the opportunity of studying in a university is something that not everybody enjoys the resources that you have at your disposal at the time when you're studying in a university these are really insane like you can if you want to go to a psychologist you can go there if you want to talk to a professor you can do that if you want to get an opinion of something you're building on you're you're building and you want to take the opinion of some professor or some kind of colleague you can do that so all of that is extremely nice so entrepreneurship stress management career development personal development, motivation, public speaking, and personal and professional networking. So these are the topics which are going to be picked up every every week. And every two weeks, we are going to have live session. And every two weeks, I have these uh, diaries where I'm actually documenting all of the like struggles that somebody can come across in a week and how you can go about it, right? So definitely you can take a look at that too. It is in the description. Today's topics are going to be first of all, like the different ways to do bachelors. Then second is going to be the process. Third is going to be the documents and deadlines. So what exact documents do you need? Because till the time of bachelors, there aren't a lot of documents that you can present anyway. So it doesn't make sense to go too deep into that. But I think the deadlines part is more important. Then there would be some words of caution, something you should like definitely be um, wary of because many students fall in these traps. They fall in some kind of really crazy offer that a consultant made to them. And then afterwards, they just realize that that offer isn't really true. And whatever admit somebody gave to them, it is actually completely false. So those things happen. So just, you know, be a bit careful about it. Um, I'm going to talk about this a bit too. And then afterwards, you can ask your questions. So bachelors in Germany. So the main reason, you know, there's so much drama about doing bachelors in Germany is essentially because in India, we study for 12 years. Here you have to study for 13 years. Like the 13 years, the abitur actually makes up the the university entrance examination on the basis of which you can start studying your bachelor's for us it's the AIEEE exam the JE exam and so on so this is like the major difference this is the thing which really just creates all of this stress and organizational chaos so but again you can like go you can take away around it in three different parts the first one is like just directly doing a student colleague the second one is you have your one year of bachelor's in India and then you clear your JE mains and then you can apply and study here. And the third one is like if you have already done your 10th and then you have done the diploma, then how can you tackle this thing? So first of all, if you talk about student colleague, now student colleague is actually, um, I would say like one of the simplest thing that you can do because you have a lot of, op lot of options left. So if you do your one year of bachelor's in India. Sorry, um, your your field is already decided. 
that means you cannot move from mechanical to chemical chemical to something else that's something that you can't do if you do the student colleague and you just get a bit used to the german engineering culture and you see what kind of fields or studies would actually be interesting for you this is actually fun because it also gives you one extra year to just judge to just judge what kind of field you would like to study afterwards right so student colleague is nice in one year of bachelor's in india you already ha you are already fixed you're already just stuck in the field in which uh, which you actually opted for in the starting clearing je mains it's difficult if i would clear je mains i would like rather even just study in iit because i think for me personally it's very important that you also get the experience of studying bachelor's in india so that afterwards you can do your masters here because the thing is like uh, you learn a lot of things you learn a lot of things in your bachelor's and most of the times it's not just purely theory now nah? when you're studying your bachelor's in india most of the times you're going to learn how to just be around people how to communicate with them how to actually whenever you have you are having any kind of differences how do you not fight and actually still come to a conclusion or you know like hostel sharing and all of those things so i personally think living in india actually gives you a lot of patience and a lot of tolerance because as soon as you are out of your 12th grade and then you are in your bachelor's the first year it's horrible i know for many of the students it's really hard to actually fit in but like really that's that's the purpose of hostels and that's the purpose of the first year of university it's just make it's just supposed to make you feel uncomfortable it's supposed to throw you completely out of the comfort zone till now you were just at home you were i don't know getting food from your parents you were being taught some kind of subjects from your father or something but as soon as you're in the university all of that goes away so the process the process for student colleague it is really simple um you come you first of all like when when you're in your 12th you can already start learning german till b2 so once you have written your b2 exam then you will apply to the student colleague so for example student colleague hamburg now it shows that the application for the semester which is starting in january it is from 1st august till 30th september now and then for the another semester i think it's the a spring semester i don't know why the helps is autumn autumn semester that is going to be from 1st february to 31st march now it's going to begin in august so like all of these things are already mentioned so once you have your b2 it's written here so like you need your b2 and then you can fill out the pdf document of the student colleague and then you have some other documents two three other documents and all of that combined you can send to the student colleague then afterwards they are going to invite you for your off number proofing no and yeah you write the off number proofing and then if you get accepted you can start studying in student colleague if you don't get accepted you can apply to some other one so after covering one year of your studies once you are accepted in a student colleague you can then write the feststellungsprüfung feststellungsprüfung is more or less 50% is more or less what your univer university entrance examination is for example in india it was the iit uh, for us it used to the used to be the ai triple e now it's completely scrapped it's no longer there so for you it's iit and fsp is more or less like the german iit exam Now B two is recommended temporary student visa or it's also the student applicant visa for three months. You can come with that here, and this is an important website which you can just take a look at because it will give you most of the information regarding all of the student colleagues. Now, and the website isn't too fancy. It's really basic, but it does give all of the information that you need. You just go to the student colleagues. It it shows you the complete list of student colleagues, which is really nice. You can contact them in case you have any kind of questions and you cannot understand something from their website. So that is always also an option, right? So just just be careful about that. Then again, one year of bachelor's. It's again direct application to university or universities. Then you also don't need a lot of German. because after first year of bachelor's in india more or less you can apply only in the english taught programs here and also there are lesser number of courses and ielts is required
All right, then you have the third option, and I think this is the most difficult one by far. Um, if you have done diploma, it's really difficult to get accepted in bachelor's. Like, you definitely can get accepted, but you have to just throw a lot of shots at different universities and see which ones stick. Now, and also you should apply for the universities where the application can be sent directly to the university and not to some, like, not to the uni assist because uni assist isn't recognizing diploma. Then also, you sh like I said, like there are lesser number of courses available. One of the few universities that you can definitely apply to or try to apply is Degendorf and Duisburg. And you also need IELTS for that. Okay, so like these are the important things. And this is the link. I think it, it got cut towards the end. But at UniAssist, you can find the link regarding student colleague. That is really nice and more or less every single, uh, all of the information which is important is condensed into one single page. And then the second one, which actually allows you to see if your university, or if, if your school essentially is accepted um, by uni assist or not. So this is more relevant for the people who are actually already doing their first year in um, in a university in India. Now let's talk about the processes. So the first of all, you know, everybody, let me just know in the comments, first of all, how many of you are in the 11th grade and how many of you are in the 12th grade? Now, if once we have that, then we can have a more meaningful conversation and a more meaningful presentation afterwards. And I can also like, you know, focus towards answering your questions then. So 11th or 12th? I'm going to wait for a few seconds and see. All right, ZK case is 12th grade. Uh, Ram Prakash is again asking about some LORs. That's not really not the question I'm asking right now. 11th, 11th, 12th, 11th, 11th, 12th, 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 11th, 12th. All right. That's really nice. Now, now I understood what what exactly is the crowd that I'm talking to. So like it is going to be better for for me to just tell you. And also Mehul, uh, I'm going to make Mehul the moderator too, so that, you know, whatever things that Mehul is saying, just also keep an eye for it because Mehul actually did his student colleague here and he is now waiting for the FSPs. So anybody who is having questions when I'm giving the presentation, you can also address it directly to Mehul. All right, now let's start going forward with that. Thanks a lot for your responses. Now let's let's go forward with the presentation and then we can take up your questions afterwards. <clears throat> so 12th grade, we have B2. Now, once you're in their 12th grade, you know, you already should have a aim of at least doing B2 because without B2, you don't even have the chance to applying to student college to most of them. Now, even look at the one in Hamburg, it clearly says that you need a a tested photocopy of the B2 certificate of German proficiency. So if you don't have that, they're not going to take your application seriously. And this is really important to understand. Now, then afterwards, once you have once you have your B2, you have applied to the student colleague, they have invited you for and look, even in the student colleagues website itself, they have mentioned every single thing, steps of the application. So you have to apply for the VPD, then you have to, how do you have to apply at UniAssist? All of that information is mentioned. Then how is the off number proofing going to be and so on. They also have the, how do I say, they also have sample documents here. So uh, Eingangsprüfung, Deutsch, then you can see the math scores, all of the sample documents, so C-test and all of those things, they're always mentioned on the university's website, like the student colleague's website most of the times. Huh? So just keep an eye out for that. As long as you're curious, as long as you can use your eyes, you are going to find information regarding that. So once they have invited you for Aufnahmeprüfung and you have written the Aufnahmeprüfung, then you can start studying in student colleague. Then afterwards comes your Feststellungsprüfung. And on the basis of the score in your Feststellungsprüfung and 50% of the grades that you had in your bachelor's, sorry, in your, in your 12th grade, then a final score will be decided on the basis of which 
which you will be allotted different universities. So again, the documents and deadlines, first of all, the documents which are required generally are a copy of passports data page. So like it is going to the first page and the last page, then the B1 and or B2 GOIT exam certificate, like I showed you the one in Hamburg, it is asking for B2 GOIT exam certificate, then the 12th class mark sheet. Now that's really um, self understanding. Then VPD from uni assist if necessary. So the one in student colleague Hamburg, they are asking for the VPD. So you can't really do anything there. You have to provide the VPD from the uni assist. Then VPD, if you click here, the uni assist, I think. Um, yeah, the uni assist thing is going to open and then you can just follow the steps which are provided on the website and just apply for the VPD. And also it is really important and I would like really emphasize it that VPD you can use for the next one year. So it's not like you apply for VPD right now and you can only use it in the next intake. No, you can also use it for the another two up to three intakes, right? So the sooner you apply for a VPD, the better it is. Like for bachelors, that is pretty much the key. The sooner you apply, the sooner you start organizing things, the sooner you get in contact with different kind of student colleague, different kind of language institutes, it is going to be better for you and you're not going to waste some kind of like precious one or two years. I don't even know if that's precious or like if that's like more or less expendable because I would really like if you if you don't like the education system till 12th, don't think that the education system in the university in India is going to be much different. It is going to be more chilled out. You are going to be doing a lot more useless things. But if you want to learn and stuff, I think like, you know, Germany is definitely the right place. The only reason I would prefer India would be if I, yeah, if I wouldn't have to study, to be honest, like especially for the universities, which are not IITs or even in NITs, it's more or less the same drama. So just be sure of that. Then afterwards, you also need the application form, the filled out application form for the student colleague or university or uni assist. This is pretty much the documents that you would typically need. If there are some extra documents that the uni assist or student colleague or on any of these require, then it is going to be mentioned on their websites. But generally, this is it. No LOR, no SOP or something like that. If it is mentioned there, then of course you can apply. But if it's not mentioned, then it's not necessary. Then deadlines for application for student colleague winter is going to be like for student colleague, just specifically student colleague, no university, nothing. Um, the winter semester generally starts in January for the student colleagues. The application deadline for them is 1st August till 30th September. Then afterwards, the summer semester, which is going to start in August for them, the application deadline or like the portal opening is going to be from 1st February to 31st March. Then universities, if you're applying directly to universities, the winter semester opens up from 1st June to 15 July. And the summer semester opens up, the portal for that opens up from 1st December to 15 January. And just make sure that these are for the German taught ones. And also every single university, every single institute in Germany has their own deadlines, has their own application portals, application uh, procedures many a time so just make sure that you just take a look there because like there is really no way around no way around it you cannot expect somebody to hold your hand and actually like take you through the entire process because that wouldn't really pay you out in the end uh, because every single time whenever you rely on somebody to do the things for you you will actually be face like you will actually face this issue that the people aren't going to be as serious about your things as you would be about your own and like that's also completely understandable like they are not gaining anything other than just money for you for them it is just a means to get your money to do some kind of mediocre work to maybe throw you into some kind of university and that's it and this is the reason i really emphasize every single time that all of these procedures even though they look complicated in the starting if you just sit down and if you just read them if you just go through the websites it's really easy and you don't really need some third party to actually like you know take your hand and do everything with with um do everything for you 
So that is extremely important to understand because this will actually save you from any kind of horror stories. I've heard a lot of them in my Facebook group where there was where there was where there was the skid and he applied to um, with some consultant to study in Germany and afterwards he received some fake admits that the consultant created himself. He used those fake admits to apply for visa in the consulate and then he got banned for life for from ever going to Germany. Uh, like that's how horrible the situation can be. So just like do not trust, I don't know, whatever kind, they could be the fanciest consultants. And I'm telling you, the fanciest consultants are really the shittiest ones. Like, they would screw you over. And if you try to talk about them, they are going to give a legal notice to you. And it has happened to a lot of students. Happened to me once too when I tried to expose some kind of consultant. And yeah, you can't really do anything then afterwards if without actually going all out war and having a lawyer and like, you know, going to these court hearings and all of that. So really like do not fall in their trap. Let them earn money from selling their services to people who are going to USA, who are going to Australia, who are going to Canada and all of that. But do not fall in their trap. Do the things on your own. Now to now. Uh, yeah. To end this up now, because like this is pretty much it. This is like all of the information that you are going to need to start applying to student college to start studying here. Now, um, I'm going to like close the session slowly now with some word of words of caution. First of all is, you know, learn German till B2. That is extremely important. You cannot, you absolutely cannot deny or ignore the importance of learning German till B2. It is extremely important. The sooner you do, do it, the better it is going to be. Now, then the second one is start preparing at least 6 to 12 months in advance. 12 is again a, re a very conservative um, estimate. I would rather go up to 18 months in advance. Student applicant visa for Aufnahmeprüfung is something that you have to apply for. And the checklist for the documents is pretty much the same for the national visa for the student. If you're coming for three months, then you can, you know, get the blocked account for three months. If you're coming for six months, you can come for six months and so on. So this is just a really basic you don't need a lot of documents you don't you don't need too much drama and um yeah that is going to be your student applicant visa with which you are coming to germany and writing the off number proof tourist visa isn't accepted so like if you if you come to write the off number proof on tourist visa the universities might not accept it and don't fall into the traps of consultants. They are really, really like they are the scum of the earth. I'm telling you, like most of them, like even if there might be some good ones who are actually trying to help, but the others have created such a bad image, such a bad reputation of anybody else who might be even trying to do something good. So I would say in general, you know, just try to do things on your own. Exactly. Conditional admits can also be received if you apply on your own. And whenever in doubt, you can directly contact the student colleague, university or the German mission. Then also, whenever you have any kinds of doubt, like I said, whenever you have any kind of questions, any kind of queries, you directly come to the Facebook group. Facebook group is Bharat in Germany. You just come, you search first of all, if there is something already discussed like that previously. And I'm going to put this a bit up so that you can see. So like just in the search option, you can put some terms and you can see what kind of um, options you're getting. So for example, if I write here, student colleague. Now, if I write student colleague here, you will see that there are actually a lot of different posts which are actually regarding student colleague. And then you can just start, you can just start reading them. You can just start getting more and more idea about it. No. So like, again, Akhil also like made this really nice post about FAQs from University of Pedaborn. So this is also something that you can just go and you can just start reading because this is how you are actually doing smart work. You are actually not falling into the traps of anybody and you're just doing everything on your own. And the feeling that you're going to get afterwards, once you have done everything on your own, 
it is going to be very better. You are going to proudly say, hey, I did everything on my own. Everything worked out. I didn't pay any extra money to anybody else. And now again, like, you know, if, if you aren't able to figure it out and then in the end you have to give money to some kind of consultants and it is going to cost a lot more, then of course, like, that's sad. Like, you can't really do anything about it. But you can and you will be able to do everything on your own just if you... You know, just search for information on the internet and then you're actually able to contact these different universities, the German consulate and so on. Again, so with the same aim of doing it yourself, I actually created my online course so that you can do everything on your own. But the information that you need, all of that is combined in one single place that means you are spending more time in actually doing things and not wasting time in organizing different kinds of information for you so you have lifetime access to it you have personal mentoring in the sense that every two weeks we are having live sessions in the facebook group of the big academy so this is the one that you have for bharat in germany but we have another facebook group which is for the students who are enrolled in the courses so there we are having live sessions every two weeks which is like super nice and you can also like be a part of them if you are enrolled in the course also this is an exclusive community of more than 100 plus members detailed information regarding application procedure visa procedure and after arrival in germany then, like I said, we have bi-weekly live sessions and you are going to be there in a closed group, in a closed Facebook group with me. So that's pretty much it, guys. Now, with that, I'm going to let you ask your questions. We have 30 minutes time. Thanks a lot for your audience. And for you who want to enroll in the complete guide to studying in Germany later on, which is an online course, and you will be able to find it on my website also the link is in the description for this course um, you can just take a look you can go through the curriculum but i would highly advise you if you would like to start doing things on your own and you don't want to waste too much time on just organizing things you can just like, like go through the curriculum see what kind of information that you you will be getting access to and just come and enroll yourself on my website all of the details are in the description yeah so like for that the relevant courses with big yt10 coupon code you are going to get 10% off on this one and if you're living in some kind of remote city where you don't have good language schools near you or if you prefer actually learning things online and not waste time in commuting to some place and wasting 10 or 15 minutes on the way or sometimes even 40 minutes some students have to waste so if you don't want to do that you can also take the online course from michael and with the link which is in the description you will be getting 10% off on that course too so again, this is just some kind of information that you have to, uh, you know, like th there is no, th there is like, uh, what I want to say is like, you can, you know, do everything on your own. And that's how most of the students do now. But if you want to save time on organization, then you are having these kind of courses, which would be worth investing and in. you would still be doing everything on your own you would still be making your own decisions which course to study which university to study in but you would be having some kind of community some kind of hand holding experience so that you know your transition from studying in india right now to germany is a bit more smooth so again that's pretty much it now let's start slowly with the questions for the students who are already here, like I said, um, not this Patreon one, but my mentorship program is already up. It actually helps students to just be a better version of themselves, to do more things, to use more opportunities when they are in Germany. And it is more focused towards bachelor students in Germany universities, master students, and fresh or experienced professionals in any country. So just teaches you more to utilize all of the resources that you have already here in germany all right then enough of that let me start with the questions now vikrant kumar is asking i enrolled in an engineering college but then i dropped out is it going to affect my application 
Vikrant, it, it necessarily isn't going to affect your application in the sense that, you know, as long as you have your 12th grade, it's completely fine. You would still be able to apply. But because you dropped out, it isn't going to be some kind of negative that, hey, this kid dropped out and he, he isn't worthy enough of studying in our student colleague. That's really not the case. All right, uh, Garv Ahuja did bachelor's from distance distance learning make me eligible for MBA. Garv Ahuja, no, that doesn't happen. If you want to apply for MBA, like first requirement is that you need to have three years of work experience and then you need to have a full-time bachelor's. So I don't think it is going to be possible that with distance learning bachelor's, you are able to apply for MBA. Yeah, maybe in some like really like not so known private institutes, but not in the priv like more reputed ones. All right, Om Agarwal is asking, is learning German till B2 in India wise for clearing off NAMA proofing as learning German in Germany is very different than in India and we have a serious competition for off NAMA proofing? So Om, I don't believe that at all. Like I, I think like there are students who think that learning German in Germany is better or like, you know, anybody who was in Germany got taught better German. But I think that's like, that's more or less a loser's argument because that's really not true. If that would be the case, then I would be complaining that I never went to any kind of Sprachschule or I have never really went to any kind of language institute. I learned German on my own. All I had was my books. And I learned that during the last semester of my bachelor's in India. So now again, I could also be complaining that, hey, you know, I wasn't able to clear the exam or something like that. But that's not really what happened. What happened was I learned everything on my own and I was still able to clear the exam afterwards. And it worked out. And it worked out. There was a lot more efforts. Um, and like I would, I would have actually loved to just do some less efforts. But anyways, I did a lot more efforts, and I actually was able to receive the result that I wanted. And when I came here, when I started studying, it wasn't like their German is different than my German. No, like if you learn German in India or if you learn German in Germany, it is going to be the exact same thing. The tests, the B two test, the C one test, C two test, all of those tests are standardized. That means it doesn't matter in which country you're taking the test in. The if you have cleared one test or if you have cleared one level, that means you are basically at that level. There is no comparison or no difference that, hey, this is different. This is different level because he studied in India and this is a better level because he studied in Germany. That's really not the case. All right, Obed Khan is asking how to increase visa days if you fail in Aufnahme Prüfung. Uh, I think Mehul can respond to that um, because I don't think you can if you fail in the Aufnahme Prüfung and like you can definitely try. Like Mehul had a lot of experience with that. He had been like bugging the foreigner's office more or less to actually ask like even if you fail, like how it is possible to, you know, just get things extended and more or less you can try you can try doing that and if it doesn't work out then again you don't have a choice you have to go back and you have to apply again so genius genre is asking can i start to learn german now and complete b1 before off number proofing test how long will it take to complete b1 if i enrolled in language schools this summer i am studying in 12th now so genius genre the the main important or like the main question that you should be asking is how much time would it take in the sense that not months but how many like hours per day are you going to study to be able to reach b1 or b2 in specific months so i would rather say if you want to aim for b1 um for B1, I would say for three months, if you're studying everything on your own from five to eight hours every single day, it is going to be sufficient. And when you study like, you know, more effectively, because it was sufficient for me. Yeah, it would be sufficient three months, five to eight hours every single day that you would be actually having the level B1 afterwards. So I don't know if really like enrolling yourself in the language schools would really help because you are having classes on the side all the time anyways. So I don't think it would bring too much, right? So you can also try some online courses, like I said. 
so I don't think me will respond to that question yeah I think me is away now but most of the times like when you fail in the off number proofing you can always go all right so Mehul has actually written the best thing to do would be to enroll yourself to language school for a six month course at least before you apply for a visa then you can write off number proofing during the course all right that that's also interesting you can also try doing that and also if anybody has any questions like i said you can just directly come to the main facebook group and you can just yeah, just like post your questions there and this is my page this is the main one i'll be sure my indian students are just in poor condition yeah you can't really do anything about it right i mean the government isn't really thinking about the students at all it isn't thinking about the youth it isn't talking about the youth so what is pretty much the point it's really absolutely nothing i've been i've been ash yadav so dev thakur is saying explain vpd so vpd is more like a pre preliminary documentation of your profile that the uni assist does on the on behalf of the universities so first of all you have all of your documents you give it to uni assist uni assist is going to make one single paper which is going to be the vpd and which will say that this is the score this is the equivalent score of this candidate in the german terms so or like in the german system right so on the basis of that like with the vpd and with the other documents like i actually showed you here with the other documents just a second like you have the vpd you have your passport copy you have the b2 certificate german exam you have another passport photograph and so on with all of those things you can just directly apply now so like this is something very important vpd if asked by the university or by the student colleague you don't really have a uh, alternative here you have to apply for the vpd and vpd you can apply from uni assist that's pretty simple even if you like just go to google and you type uni assist student colleague you are going to find a completely detailed web page which which is going to tell you every single thing about studying student colleague Karav Bhalla is saying FSP from one S student colleague allows you to get into any university. Yeah, Karav, that's the situation. If you write the FSP from any student colleague, you can study in any university. That's you don't have to write FSP every single time for different universities. Uh, SK twenty three. Can we sit in the off number proofing without doing student colleague just with a German language of P two? So SK twenty three. You know, for for this question, it is. better that you actually see what the syllabus of the test is right now if you go to the i i eingangs prüfung you have the german and you have maths so it is actually really important for you to just study both of them really like properly and then write the exam and if you don't have b1 then i don't think you are going to be able to attempt the german part anyways because it is it is a bit advanced it is more of the level from b1 to b2 and not of the level b1 you know so like just um take take care of that you need you will absolutely need good maths and you are going to need good german because that is the syllabus of the off number prüfung Shivansh Singhal how much is required in class 12th boards boards so as to get into your Munich CS branch so Shivansh that's not the right question the right question would be what is the equivalent german grade that you need to get into the CS branch in the german universities and that is very easily like in the abitur or like in the how do i say in the university entrance exam you need around 1.7 or above to get into any good university in good branches every single time there are universities which have a numerous clauses that means they have some kind of cut off that last time this was the grade of the last student who was admitted into our into our program and generally it stays more or less there 
Like it could be some ver- there could be some variations, but they are not that much. And you can just check the numerous clauses of different universities to get information regarding if your grades are good enough. Because your 12th grade is going to account for 50% of the marks and your grades in the FSP is going to account for 50% of the marks to make the final score with which you can apply to the universities. Bharat in Germany, bachelor's from LMU. Yeah, I mean, sure, if you can, if you can get LMU, definitely. It's, it's a really, uh, really nice university, you know. I wouldn't complain if I get an admit there. Germany has lost, lost its charm. Okay. How? I mean, most of the people I see here are doing completely fine. Please tell more about accommodation in Germany when we get enrolled in student college. Yeah, you can get student college, student hostel given by university. So genius genre, most of the times when, when you're like studying student college and if it's a private student college, it is possible that they give you some kind of accommodation for the first month or the first few weeks. But then afterwards, you have to search it on your own. Like there is really no going around it. Um, and, and here's the funny part, you know, like, I think many people are also like, not really, um, how, how should I put it? How should I put it? Like some people aren't really made to like do these independent things on their own. Like they just aren't made it. Many people, they come here, they think, Hey, things, things are going to be fun. But, but then afterwards when they have to look for a apartment, they have to find a job. They have to actually pay the rent and stuff. They really lose this, um, yeah, almost the paradise filter that they have for Germany, that everything is perfectly fine, everything is really nice. But just because they lost that filter doesn't mean that the situations situations actually changed here. Now, it's still the same thing. It's still the same people, the same environment, the same strong economy. And if you can complain about things here, man, like you must be having millions of things to complain about in India. And that is also pretty much why I promote it so often. Why I'm like absolutely pushing for students that they come to Germany, that they study here because I have been to India. I have been through the process. I have studied my bachelor's here and I have seen what kind of job situation is afterwards and it isn't nice. Trust me, it isn't, it isn't nice. If after spending four years of your life in bachelors in some kind of government university or in some kind of private institute and if some company is offering just 7000 rupees 5000 rupees sometimes 15000 rupees what is it like you cannot even live off of it no so i just don't like i don't i just don't understand the people who think that who still complain when they have come here for bachelors because Man, trust me, things in India are way worse and I have actually lived them. I have actually experienced experienced them firsthand. So I, I completely know the difference and this is the reason I promote Germany so much. Shivansh Singhal, how is the climate change in Germany? I never understood this. Shivansh, what do you um, exactly mean by that? Because like if you're talking about the change in seasons and the weather, yeah, I mean it is extremely crazy. It is just absolutely insane. Right now it's it's five. It's already dark. In summers it could be eleven o'clock or eleven thirty and it would still be light outside. And just just for a comparison, you know, once um once we are having more and more live sessions, like maybe five or six live sessions afterwards you could already see the difference. Bharat, please, can you pick my question? Uh, Devarsh Bhanushali is asking. Please tell me how to apply through hoakshuler.de. I have five courses distinguished but unable to proceed, please. So, Devarsh, like hoakshuler.de. I have I have never really set myself with this particular thing, but you know, I'm just going to read more about it. You can send me an email regarding this thing if you're like facing some really particular thing, but most of the times you are able to get an answer from the people themselves, like from 
the website where you're applying for this. Generally, like I use Dart for shortlisting the universities, and afterwards you can use UniAssist to apply for them, and that's that's that. Flamescape, should I do bachelors from Canada or Germany? All right, so we have two interesting questions here already. Why you said next year is your last meetup in India? The evil is asking. So I think more or less I'm we, we are thinking about about it more from like the security standpoint like yeah the the more people you know the worse it gets like in terms of what kind of people actually come to the meetup so like we don't really want to risk it especially when i have alina with me um I, i've seen people having police and stuff in the meetups and I, I also don't want to do that like it's useless i'm just here to like connect with you and stuff and um right now it's still fine hundred thousand but most of the times th out of those hundred thousand you know a lot of them are already in germany they already like make the transition and then some students they are still in india you can all again like go there the number of students who are coming to germany doesn't change that dramatically but the number of students who are interested in studying in germany is changing really fast so again i think like that's why next year is going to be the only time when we are able to do, do the meetup um because of just like financial reasons and all of that <sighs> yeah so that's unfortunately that the the case and we are going to see like once the voting stops then we are going to see like what kind of cities we can visit because last time it was horrible it was like absolutely unbearable to just go to so many different cities and you know, every single night i remember the the first time when i gave the meetup like when i had when i gave the presentation in mumbai um i didn't sleep for the last 72 hours and i was like still i gave the presentation and then i was still speaking for the next four or five hours directly talking to students then i was completely exhausted and at the same night we didn't sleep again because we had to go to goa um yeah so the flight was at two o'clock so again like don't we didn't sleep the whole time it was just like really bad this time hopefully we will make the planning a bit better maybe we are going to stay more than one day every single city and in every in, in each of the cities but we'll just see we'll just see how it works flamescape is asking should i do bachelors from canada or in germany flamescape i'm never going to recommend canada my, my brother is doing his bachelors from canada and i just see how the situation is like you don't you don't find a job if you don't have good references. You can forget about the merit. It's like the the next level of the reservation system that we have in India. It's absolutely horseshit anyways. Whatever we see in India, like you allot a specific number of seats to some kind of category. That's not the case in Canada. But there, if you don't have references, it's hard to find a job, which is like really useless. I don't really like this thing. So... You know, I never, I would never recommend uh, Canada. Even I'm telling my younger brother to like move to Germany because of the way his job is getting paid per hour, even if, uh, even when he's working um, in an accounting company, it's just useless. Really not worth it. And anyways, like the people who are actually now joining in, like some of them are also talking about doing student colleague here you know like for the students who are already here you can come at patreon and you can like just check out this mentorship program it is going to be definitely very interesting for you you can just see what kind of things you need help with because a lot of people never really try to change any of that they never really try to i don't know have their own blogs uh, take the initiative of just do presentations and stuff and never really develop their personality all of those things are going to be something very useful uh, and something that we are going to constantly work on in this particular program. So just take a look at that. You can definitely check it out. And the students who are like just purely interested in only studying in Germany, like I said, you can take the take a look at the curriculum here in the course that I was talking about, the complete guide to studying in Germany or at the Michaels course. So both of these courses are going to be definitely really important for you. All right, then with that out of the way, we have the last six minutes left for the live session. And 
Sai Kumar is saying, should we pay 8,000 euros every year? So Sai, that 8,000 euros is the blocked, blocked account amount that you have to show. Like there is no going around it. So yeah, I mean, you will have to pay 8,000 euros per year. But it really depends on how much money you're spending. So from the blocked account, you get the 720 euros to you. But then it's up to you if you want to burn all of those 820 euros or if you want to save something. If you would be a person like me, you would like definitely like love to spend your money smartly and not just waste everything. So if I would be in that scenario, I might even like still save up to like 2000 euros or 2500 euros from that 8000 euros that I have to pay in Germany. Om Agarwal is asking, all right. So in 2018, the situation of visa was very bad. It is likely to get worse. How do we tackle this as we get our 12th results in June? And it's already late. So if you're talking about like, you know, if you get your 12th results in June, that means if you if we take the example of the student colleague of Hamburg. Nah? For Hamburg, you look at the Bewerbung and it is from 1st August till 30th September. So you will have time till 30th September to actually apply to the student colleague, but with the help of the VPD. That means you need also another extra 19 till, you know, 25 days, 25 working days for the VPD part, which will be uh, processed by the uni assist. No? That means as soon as you get your results in june and you get your degree certificate like your degree and stuff maybe till july you already apply in july it will take one month for union assist to give your vpd and once you have the vpd with all of these other documents you can together directly apply to the student colleague in hamburg or whatever student colleague you want to apply to so till 30th september you will have the time so like don't worry too much about this one you can definitely like you will definitely be able to apply and once they once you have applied, then they give you the decision when the offline proofing is happening. And then you can apply for the visa, visa interview. But in general, you know, even if you want to like take a wild guess of what date or what kind of month I should apply for the visa interview, then it should generally be like around, I think, October. So once you apply for October, the thing is going to start in January and you have two, two months, which is completely fine. Like one month or something is perfectly fine. Sony AN, is it mandatory to study the German for part-time job? Uh, Mehul is saying, nope, but it's recommended. And that's also true. It's not necessary to know German to do a part-time job. There are like a lot of jobs you can still do without knowing a lot of German. But if you are able to learn German, it is definitely going to be way better for you because you are going to get better jobs. You are going to have better chances, even in like just normal fields like gastronomy and stuff. No. Obed Khan, how much percentage in 12th grade is required to get admission in student colleague? So it's it's really different um most of the times they always recommend you to get more than 65 percent that you're so that you're able to apply in the student colleague so that is something you should definitely aim for and i don't think 65 percent is too less so aditya is asking value of an android or ios developer in germany my friend here was getting paid rupees 8000 for working straight 10 hours as an android developer recently he moved to us working for 4800 per month man this is absolutely crazy like what i have seen here like for full stack developers or like even for app developers uh, the really general, like the minimum salary that you get is like 5,000 euros per month, which is a lot no? and like 8,000 euros. And you compare it with 5,000 euros per month in Germany, you already see the huge difference. And like, this is the reason, you know, like, like I said all the time, this is the only reason I want to make the goal of my life to bring as many students as I can to actually come to Germany, like to come to Germany and to start studying here because the situation is just bad in India. 
like it's just a tragedy it's just a huge human tragedy the way india has been handling things and it is likely most likely not going to change in the future so every single body you know like whoever is coming for bashes whatsoever is happening you can definitely come to the facebook group at least come to the facebook group start connecting with each other because we also have other facebook groups like bachelors in germany and blah 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 but nobody is really active there and this is the reason i am saying it is better that you come to the main one and then you can start researching you can start posting your questions and stuff and you can interact with other people you know the complaint that i have from the students who are actually already studying their bachelors here is nobody really comes down to interact like their part is done and then they're never going to touch they're never going to take care of like answering other people's questions and like mehul is at least somebody who is in the live chat right now and he, he's like really trying to yeah and he's really trying to answer most of these questions you know and like i would just wish i would wish more of these students more of the students who are actually studying or who are coming for bachelors here to like respond like that so that people are actually you know their their experience of this transition from india to germany is easier or like is better because i understand i i know that most of the times you completely forget how you used to feel how desperate you used to feel to actually come to germany when you were in india and as soon as you're here you just you just completely forget all of that so that's something that is sad and i hope more students from bachelors who are studying bachelors here are actually coming in the group and like sharing their experiences this is going to be then a bit more healthy um environment there but for now again um it's time to end the live session now anybody who is interested in joining us on patreon well we have some really cool things coming up this sunday we are having this bi-weekly diary uh, where i'm going to talk about the struggles that i faced during this week and what uh, and how you can do to and what you can do to overcome that because this is just something that you have to be in the right mindset so that you can take inspiration from other people and sometime if you are in the same problem like i was in you can use it for yourself and then we have these different kind of live sessions we have guidance programs and all of that just take a look at that and for the people who are just absolutely focused or who want to just um find something for studying in germany you have these two courses so with that out of the way thanks a lot for joining me in the live sessions it was a pleasure to talk to you and i'll catch you up in the next live session the ask your questions 29 which is going to be more focused towards the students who are actually already studying in germany and just telling them about how they can make the most out of their bachelors or their masters All right then guys thanks a lot for joining in everybody have a great night see you again next week the same time bye bye